today we're working on Psalm 83. Now, Psalm 83 is traditionally used to overcome others who have done you harm. And it's really one of the cursing psalms. It's it's not quite as cursy as some of them, but it's pretty darn cursy. So it's a cursing psalm. And the curses in the in the book of Psalms are very, very powerful. And you can use them to curse people, but that's not how we use them. We use them to curse thought forms, to destroy errant thought forms. Now, the good news about all of this is if you do have an enemy or something like that out in the world, this still will take care of it, but we're not directing it at them personally. We're directing it at our own thought forms. The result of working on your own thought forms is that the problems that you're having in the world spontaneously resolve as a result of it. So you will be able to take care of any problems with enemy type people in your life by working in the manner that we outline today. The way we work Psalm Magic is very simple. We take the Psalm in question and we recite it out loud all the way through once. This we call an incantation. Then we take that same psalm and we go back through it and we work on it by considering each verse in order and we search for hidden occult meanings within those verses. And we really try to work, we try to toil, we try to dig deep. And it's through that toiling in the, in the deep soil of our deep mind that we are finding those seeds, those, those magical seeds of wisdom that are inherent in the psalm and thus planting them deeply in the fertile grounds of our minds where they in turn take root and then they grow and they blossom forth and bear fruit after their kind. And that is exactly what we are going to do right now together with Psalm 83. Keep thou not silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hagarines, Gibal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyr, Assur also is joined with them. They have holpen the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Habin, at the brook of Chison, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all the princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Okay, let's go through this and work some magic, shall we? It starts out, Keep not thou silence, O God. Now, this, when, when the Psalms say God in the Hebrew, it, it is Elohim. When the Psalms say the Lord in Hebrew, it's the Tetragrammaton, in uh, the way that the King James Version is translated. So, keep not thou silence, O Elohim. Now, Elohim is a collective. Elohim literally means the gods. So, the creative force in that book of Genesis was not Yahweh, it was Elohim. And Elohim is 
the ultimate creative force of the universe. And so when we're saying, keep not thou silence, O Elohim, we are saying, talk to us, let us hear, show us, help us, do something. Don't be silent. The, the, silence of, of, the silence of God is fine in meditation, but we've got problems here. We've got troubles. We need you to not be so silent. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Now, if you recognize that God is stillness, God is peace, God is the peace that passeth understanding. So, in that sense, what we're asking God to do is to be as upset as we are. So this is a very interesting way of looking at how sometimes we we approach our higher power. We expect our higher power to be an image that we made. But that's not what God is. God is not an image that we made. God is infinite. God is infinite intelligence, infinite peace, infinite truth. And as such is the is the answer to our problems. The answer to our problems. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Now, we're talking about our own thought forms. All the thought forms within us that hate God are the thought forms which are at odds with our true will, are the thought forms that try to thwart our actual function here. Because if we are in alignment with our true will, also known as the divine design, God's will, if we are involved only with our true will, everything always works out. Everything works out beyond measure. But when we have thought forms within us that are at odds with with God's will or the true our true will, that's when problems come about. So those are the enemies that make a tumult and hate God. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. <laughs> so those thoughts inside of our, our our own consciousness that are out for self-destruction are crafty. They are sly. They are cunning. It's a it's a collection of thoughts that we call the ego. That that idea, that habit of mind that is thinking that it's separate from its creator, separate from all. The, the antithesis of oneness. So that's a crafty, um, sly, and cunning voice within our heads. And have consulted against God's hidden ones. So those, those thoughts in our minds are trying to undermine the occult knowledge that is already existing within our, within our being, within our soul. It's trying to actually create a universe of its own, which is impossible. So it's basically we are talking about our own insane thinking. They have said, come and let us come, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So a nation is an overarching thought form. So these these Errant thought forms, this ego kind of mind is trying to recruit thoughts to create large thought forms, which can actually, in its insane thinking, overcome God, which is impossible because they don't exist. They're, they're just illusions. You know, it's just the, the, the scary darkness is not so scary once you turn the light on. It's just, it, it's seen as what it was. It was just a nothing. So the same thing with these thoughts. They're nothing, but they seem huge. And when they come into physical form, when they, when they project on the screen of space, they seem even scarier because they come in the forms of people and events that seem to be out to get us. That the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. Now, in this sense, the name of Israel is that nation within us, the overarching thought form of our soul. So the thought forms that we were created with, God created us with our own thought forms already. Any extra thought forms that we've come up with, that's what we've done. But we've already been given thought forms. And those are our thought forms. Those are our soul. So when it says that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. So so these thought forms within us, these errant thought forms, these ego thought forms are trying to destroy us. They are trying to stamp out the memory of who we really are in favor of this false sense of self. 
For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So there again, that the coming together of a, of a, of a thought form is all these thoughts coming together to form a thought form in tr- trying to have a war against God, trying to have a war against our own good. And now remember, remember that that is insane thinking because it's trying to do something it can't do. There's nothing that, that can, you can't do that. You can think you can do that. You can fantasize that you're doing that, but it's similar to throwing a rock at, a, at the sun and think that it's hurting the sun or destroying the sun. There's nothing that the ego can really do other than make you believe that it's doing that and scare you and try to enroll you in its delusion. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines, Tyre, Asur have joined with them. All of those nations, all of those nations represent body consciousness and carnal mindedness, uninitiated mind, ego oriented mind, separation, lines of separation. Gebal is lines of separation. Uh, Hegeonites are the uninitiated, unenlightened thinking, Moab, carnal mind, Edom, outer body sensation. You know, so that's all what that is. So the ego gets us by trying to believe that the created world, the screen of space, has power over us. And so we are kind of all under this hypnotic spell of the ego. And when what happens is then we get experiences in the screen of space that proves those thoughts. So that's when we have these enemies and we have these problems and we have these 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 major issues in our lives. Asur is also joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. So it's it's all basically these thought forms are trying to prove to us that we are separate from our good, trying to prove to us that we are uh, vulnerable, trying to prove to us that there is no God, trying to prove to us that the only thing important is the carnal. Only thing that is important is that which we can see with our eyes, we can feel with our hands. And so the things of the world are real and the things of the spirit are not real. Therefore, these problems are real there, and there's nothing you can do about them. That's the, the basic gist of the ego, because these problems have all the power. The psalmist starts to give a litany of all of these ancient uh, enemies of Israel that have been overcome throughout the years. So we're, it's, it's trying to go back in memory of all of the times that things have been overcome. And that's what we are being encouraged to do in this psalm, is to go back through memory and realize that you've overcome things in the past when you've worked in concert with God rather than in concert with your ego, and so you will do it again. So it said, uh, gives you this litany, do unto them do unto them as unto Midianites, Sisera, Habin, the brook of Chison, which perished at Endor, make their nobles like Oreb, like Zeb, like the princess of Zeba, Zalmunna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. So these thought forms say, yeah, anything that, that is God-oriented, we're going to make our own. These, these are ours now, not God's. These are ours. We are creating our own universe. That's the, 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 um, the, the basic evil of these thought forms, is that we are creating our own universe separate and distinct from God, and that that's what it is. And the only thing that, that exists is the physical world, and what we can see with our eyes, and what we can feel with our senses, and that's what's real. Everything else is not. With, we live in the causal world. The physical world is the causal world. The mind has nothing to do with any of it. That's what these things try to convince us. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. As the fire burneth a wood and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. So we are wanting we are giving permission to God to come in and roto-rooter out those thought forms. Get rid of them. Burn them up. Throw them on the pyre. Make them like a wheel. Turn them out. Do whatever you have to do. We don't want to keep them. We do not want to keep them. And if you can turn any of those thoughts around and 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 have them be... Uh, 
thoughts which are good for us, that's great. Otherwise, just get rid of them. That's what we're saying here. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. There's a couple of reasons why we seek shame in the Psalms. One is to turn things around. That's what shame means. So it's like, oh, you don't want to think that. Think this, right? The other reason to to use shame in, in these Psalms is so that we remember what those thoughts are when we see them again. It's like a badge. It's like a scarlet letter. Mm, you don't want this one. This one is, this isn't a, a, a thought that is of God. This is a thought you came up with. So let's not participate in this one anymore. And so when we, when we ask God to put shame on them, that's a way for us to remember when those thoughts come up again, that we don't want to, uh, we don't want to indulge in those anymore. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. So we want to we want to recognize that evil destroys itself because it's not real. There's a natural order to things. And in in the moment, it can seem like nothing's ever working. But God's time is different than our time. And everything eventually works itself out so that it's all perfect the way it's supposed to be. And so a lot of times what happens is we think that... that uh, Things aren't working out so well that 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 uh, that we're sort of destined to have bitterness and darkness and evil and and chaos in our lives. When in reality, those things eventually always destroy themselves. Now, when we come to a psalm like this, we're giving this infinite intelligence permission to speed it up, speed up that process. So all of these things destroy themselves quickly. And the reason why they destroy themselves quickly is because we're not giving them any more life. We're not we're not keeping those thought forms alive anymore. We're saying, I'm done. I'm finished with this whole thing. No more of these thought forms of separation. No more of these thought forms of darkness. No more of these thought forms of uh, self-destruction and self-loathing. Not doing that anymore. I'm being instructed only by infinite intelligence. And anything that's not like infinite intelligence, I'm giving permission for infinite intelligence to remove it and let it out of my life. And it says forever. (laughs) Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know thou, whose name alone is, uh, it says Jehovah, but it's the the Tetragrammaton here. So we've got both. Now, the Tetragrammaton refers more to, in this sense, more to the second sphere and Elohim more to the first sphere on the tree of life. But that's not super duper important here. What we're talking about here is infinite intelligence, infinite life, infinite principle, infinite law, perfect love, infinite divine truth, infinite spirit, infinite soul, all of those qualities of God, which are bound up in that that tetragrammaton, YHVH, those qualities of God, it's not a separate deity. It's not some some deity up in the sky. It's definitely not a dude (laughs) somewhere distinct from us. It's not some sort of father figure necessarily. What it is, is it's the source of all life. It's that which is beating your heart right now. Men may know that thou, whose name alone is infinite, infinite intelligence, infinite being, are the most high over all the earth. Now, the most high over all the earth, that's a title. The most high simply means the source of all that is. There's one source, there's one substance, there's one power in all the universe. It's not one God that's uh, more powerful than other gods because there's some sort of war and, and this is mightier, so we'll win over these other gods. It's just that there is only one. There's oneness. No matter what you call it, no matter what pantheon you're involved in, no matter what religion you have or no religion, there's one power. And that's what this is referring to. Not our God is better than your God. This is beyond that. This is way, way beyond theology. This is coming to the realization that infinite intelligence is your source. Therefore, infinite intelligence can make right anything in your life. And all you have to do is give up your own addiction to the problem, to the darkness, to those thought forms, and say, yes, I'm willing to have something different. I'm willing for God to come in and change it so that I am now acting and experiencing 
as my soul rather than this strange ego that I've created, which is insane, which has no sanity. There's no, there's no grounding in reality in our egos. We are powerful over this world. So whatever we believe is automatically projected onto the screen of space. We are automatic projectors. That's what we do. We project, 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 project. That's how powerful we are. We are magicians. All of us are powerful magicians. And so the problems that we experience are based on how we're projecting, both as individuals and as, as a collective of minds. And when we're calling on God to curse the darkness, what we're really doing is saying, change the film in the projector. I want to see your film rather than these scary movies that I keep coming up with. That's all we're doing. Change the film. Change the film so that I have an experience of what God's will is rather than my own small will. And so we just keep coming back to this psalm every single day until we have a sense of peace and certainty about whatever the situation that we brought to the psalm. And once we have that, then we can stop working on whatever that is and move on to something else. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.